What's up, everybody? Welcome back to your favorite New York Jets subscription podcast, Badlands. I'm your host, Joe Caparoso. Emergency Italy early AM podcast. I said I'd drop in at least one while I was traveling. May end up being two, but I wanted to get a few minutes of thoughts out. On week one, the Michael Carter extension and the continued Hassan Reddick standoff. A uh, big thanks to Paul and Connor for dropping an excellent episode last night that I got to listen to already because I'm in a different time zone. You should go listen to. It's 40 minutes to get you ready for week one, and they do talk Carter. Uh, at the end, I uh, also have a great episode of the other guys live. Uh, Will's got a new episode live in the TOJ feed. Season preview guide is live. There's plenty of stuff out there. Anyway, uh, big news dropping late last night. Not the contract we were expecting, but not a contract we're going to complain about. The Jets are finally proactive. Uh, extending slot corner Michael Carter. Three-year deal, uh, 30.7, could be worth up to 33. Good, fair money. Uh, he is currently the highest paid uh, corner, slot corner in the NFL. I'm sure that will be eclipsed when the next slot corner is paid, but one of the best, if not the best, uh, day three pick Joe Douglas has made. Actually, definitely the best day three pick he's made. Good proactive move, sends the right message, I would say, to the rest of the team. Financially, it makes sense to do this early, not late. They learned that the hard way with Bryce Huff. Uh, we've said for a while here that they would prioritize taking care of Carter before DJ Reed. I still think that's the case. Carter will be here for the long term with Sauce Gardner. I think this is probably Reed's last year with the team, but let's see. You could only pay so many people. Not surprising the Jets wanted to go ahead and pay the younger player, uh, in the slot, and again, a guy that this regime drafted. They have not had a lot of success on day three. Carter's been the exception. You know, was a guy that has started and been really good since day one, which is rare for a guy drafted in his position at a hard spot to play uh, in today's NFL, and has never really missed a beat. He's also had two ridiculous interceptions called back once against the uh, Patriots on the pick six and once against the Chiefs last year. That aside, uh, he's been terrific and is a great running mate for Gardner. So good positive news and positive vibes heading into the season. On the other end of things, the Hassan Reddick situation continues to drag on. I'm recording this, you know, it's like 9 a.m. my time, so it's 3 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's not out of the realm of possibility at all that Reddick signs Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday and does something week one. He can't obviously pay, play full reps the Niners have been able to get their act together. Trent Williams is signed. Brandon Ayuk is signed. Christian McCaffrey is practicing. They'll be at full strength. I know it's you know it's a shorter practice window than usual, but with guys like Williams and Ayuk, uh, they're going to still be good, as you would expect. With Reddick, he was at a charity event uh, in the area last night. Didn't take any comments, not surprising. He's close. He's close to the facility. So if something happens, he could fire right over there and uh, get going. I, I wouldn't say it's completely dead that he signs this week. I could very well be right back here 24 hours from now reacting to that contract or we'll have something up before then. But each passing day makes it that much more frustrating. It also starts to become a thing that at what point you just got to talk about other things related to the team and talk about him when he's here. Now they need him. He takes them from a top six or seven defense to a top one or two defense in my mind. It will get done at some point, but – it is kind of crazy to watch everything else get resolved. C.D. Lamb, all the Niners players, and this thing still drag on. We don't know specifically what the numbers are, uh, where this conversation sits. It sounds like there hasn't been much dialogue, but all it takes is one day and one conversation, and this could be resolved. So I wouldn't say 0% chance that that happens Wednesday or Thursday. But let's see. A uh, bigger picture. I wanted to answer a question in the Discord from Money Mark Sanchez. Joe, need a breakdown of emotions heading into week one. Here are mine broken out from 100. 65% nervous, 15% excited, 10% Buffalo, Miami are good, 5% Buffalo, Miami suck, 5% we're winning the Super Bowl. It's quite a breakdown there. I can tell you I would say I'm about 40% excited, 40% very nervous. It's – and I, I think the other pods have done a good job speaking to this. This has been this sort of – two-year purgatory almost waiting to to get to this point, right? Uh, finally, knock on wood, getting to see a healthy Aaron Rodgers out there with this team. Uh, it's just we've been in this like weird stasis since that injury last year. So 
for it to finally be here is a little anxiety inducing and nerve wracking. Also, week one always gets overhyped. You know, they could we've said this before. They could win week one. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going 13 and four. They could lose week one. It doesn't mean they're going forward four and 13. It's still a primetime game. There's crazy amounts of expectations. You got Mike play Mike Clay picking the Jets to win Super Bowl. Uh, you got the Jets as the betting favorites to win the AFC. It's just uncharted waters. So it would just, it's going to be good to get out there and get some games under their belt and you know kind of get through the primetime opener and get in the rhythm of playing the Titans and Patriots where the Jets are favorites. So uh, nervous and excited, I would say equal at about 40% each. The last 20% is, I would say, 10% of just like fear. Could this something similar to last year happen again, whether it's injuries or just are we missing something? Like is the coaching going to be that bad that they can't overcome it? Is there some other weakness we're not thinking about enough? I don't really think that's the case. I think this team's pretty damn good on paper, and they should be good. And I think the question is more like, are they, you know, eight, nine, nine, and eight wild card good, or can they be like twelve win home playoff game good? Obviously, you saw the season preview guide. You saw where I leaned. So that last ten percent is extremely excited. I, I'm excited to follow the Jets again. Knock on wood through a season where they're really good. I haven't got to do that really since 2010, 2015 was pretty volatile. You know, they like win four in a row, then they would lose three in a row and they won five in a row. And then they you know lost the last game. There's, there were five, like, can they just like 2010 be a five and two, six and two, and you know, they're heading to the playoffs and you know, they're good all season to cover them in that type of scenario uh, at Badlands, which we haven't gotten to do yet uh, would be incredible. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I can't, I can't wait for the game to get here. Candidly uh, traveling right now, is helping uh, take my mind off that a little bit. Although, as you can see, I'm still following everything in the Discord and consuming all the content because I'm a sicko and it's just, there's too much going on right now. So look, to put a wrap on this, uh, I think the Carter news is great objectively. Financially, it makes sense. It's good for the team in the medium and long term. It's a good player. It's good to take care of your draft picks like that. It's exactly what we wanted with Huff. The Reddick stuff, is insanely frustrating and confusing, I would even say at this point. I don't think it's dead that he doesn't, you know, he shows up at Florham Park today or tomorrow. But with each passing day, it's like, all right, this is going to be past week one. But we'll see. I'm not, I don't think the situation is completely dead yet. And overall, if you're a Jet fan for week one, the line settled around four, four and a half. That's fair. I, I think I, cover, and I'll get my official game predictions as it gets a little closer. Cover under. I think it's going to be a close game that's going to be dominated mostly by the defenses. And the question is going to be, could a guy like Aaron Rodgers make one more play than a guy like Brock Purdy late? And now the Jets have a punching chance in that situation because they don't have a dented traffic cone, a quarterback. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Make sure you check out the season preview guide uh, at patreon.com backslash Badlands TOJ. Make sure you check out all the other podcasts. I am going to go enjoy Ishkia, which is out over there. Can't really see it over the balcony, but it's out there. Uh, Thank you, and we will talk to you soon.